Hey, how's it going? And today I wanted to talk about the transact specifier in verse. And I know this sounds like something obscure and this ties into something that's called rollback. And it's something that is supposed to be unique to the verse language. I just did a tutorial about what a class is in verse. So if you're having a hard time understanding what's happening in this video, I put a link to that video in the description because it kind of, we kind of pick up where I left off there. I just have a verse device in the scene. There's no other gadgets. So what I have is a class a verse class and it's very simple it just has a variable called number that's set to zero it's an integer and then we have this simple function called increase value and it just every time it's called it increases the number by one we have our modules we have our device here we created a instance of this class that we created and i'm calling it some class and this is how we instantiate it then i've created a editable to a variable called input value when i go to change this value to run the test i don't have to keep coming back into the code i can just change it in the editor it's real simple to do this and so this input value i have it down here in this function so all this is going to do is when the program starts it's going to call this little bit of code called my function as opposed to the last tutorial i just did this function my function now takes an input variable but it doesn't return any value. And this function over here is just called. It doesn't take anything in or give anything out. It just increments variable number by one every time it's called. That's all it does. What this does is this is calling to our class and it's getting that number and it's assigning it to a variable integer called y. And then what we want to do is just check the value of that. So we're printing out what the value of that is. And at the moment right now, it is set to zero. So if we were to run the program right now, it would just, we would just see a print and zero. Now here's the meat and potatoes of everything right here. And it all comes down to this if expressions. And if expressions, in my mind, are really kind of at the heart of the verse language. They really are. Its primary function is to check whether something can succeed or fail. They don't really use the terms true or false. They just use succeed or fail. So we don't use so-called booleans. We just check other expressions to see if they can succeed or fail. And by fail, it usually means returning a value of zero. So you can't really write an if expression without giving it something to check on being whether it's true or false or succeeds or fails. Well, I'll just pull all this out of here. Now I'm getting this error. And it says expected an expression that can fail in the if condition clause. If expressions must have a condition to evaluate either to succeed or fail. If it has a condition to evaluate that's true or false, that makes it happy. That's all it needs. But then in addition to that, and the most important thing about it, is that an if expression can also be called upon to do something. And they don't like you to tell it to do more than three things at one time. That's the rule. But generally, you won't see more than three expressions within a, an if expression. And one of them is checking whether something's true or false. And then the other two are usually asking it to do something. So in this case, we're asking to set the number in that class to zero. But that's kind of redundant because it's already set to zero. But if it weren't set to zero, we'd be asking it to set to zero. Now, if I bring back that other code I just deleted, here we're making a call to increment this value by one. And here is our test condition. Is X greater than zero? And what is X? Well, X is the number that we're sending it when we call my function, which is the input value. The first thing we're gonna do is send it a negative one, and it's gonna evaluate that and say, that's not true. And so this is gonna fail. This is the main thing. An if expression cannot call another function or a method that cannot be rolled back or undone unless it has a specifier like transact. So that's the error that I'm getting right now. It's saying this function, this invocation calls a function that has no rollback effect, which is not allowed by context. This code won't compile or run because it's saying, hey, look, I can't undo what you've asked me to do unless the function I'm calling has a rollback effect, allows rollback. What are we asking about to be rollback this part? When we call this if statement, we check to see if it's true or false. If it's false, it rolls back what it was asked to do. So it'll do this stuff, but then it gets here and it turns out that it's false. Then it'll roll this back and say, no, 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 don't do any of that. And then it'll kick out and come down to the else statement. So it's kind of important to know. So how do we fix this? I come back in here and I just have to add the specifier trans X. And now this can roll back. So, and then you'll see I don't have that error anymore. So it's very, very interesting. It's very interesting how they have this set up and, and how much stuff that we're asking the 
if statement to do. So just for fun and just to test this, let's go ahead and send in an input value that's going to be negative 1. And what will happen is we're going to ask it to do something. So let's go ahead and ask it to set the initial value to 10 instead of 0. Oops. So I'll put in a 10 here. And then it will call the incrementer, which will give it 1. OK, so just to clarify, if we send this a negative 1, this is going to fail. So what's going to happen then is that it's going to be asked to do this and then it's going to roll that back and then it's going to jump to the else statement which is going to be zero because none of this happened. So all we're going to see is the default value of zero. If I come into the verse here, you can see I have negative one in here and then I, I've already compiled this. So let's go ahead and see if that's what we see. What value do we see? we would expect to see zero. So start game. Yeah, the class value is zero. Value after failure is zero, right? Okay, let's end the game and jump back in here into the editor. So back in the editor, let's just go ahead and switch that value to one. And if we look at the code, and I can uh, say that I don't think I even have to compile it. It's going to come down here. It's going to print the initial value of zero, which is here, zero. It's going to keep, keep, let's just say it's going to keep rolling, right? So it's going to come down here. It's going to set the class number to 10, and then it's going to make a function call. And then it's going to get to here, and it's going to say, hey, 1 is greater than 0. Go ahead, and everything will go through. Nothing will have to be rolled back here because this will check to true. So let's see if that's what happens. So go in here, hit start game. See, the current number is zero, the called value is 11. I hope this example helped you. I knew I was struggling just to find an example so that I could kind of illustrate these points. But anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.